In your experience, how do the PMETs they are retrenched? Uh, uh, what is the fit like um, in your experience so far? And if they don't quite fit, what would be the gaps? Yeah. Uh, so PMET retrench, what is the fit and the gap? The yeah. Answer? Yes. Everyone will say something. Check this out to the point that I wanted to ask you. Start okay. the difference. Okay, what's the difference? Okay. I guess the also along the same lines in terms of you know uh, when you talk about the job scope, right? But in startups, it's it's quite can be very broad. We also expect them to, to be able to adapt quickly in different uh, positions. Right? So I think ad adaptability is the one key point. Yeah. Okay. So how do you take care of instances where the positions are very broad? Huh? Yeah. Okay. Joe, I. One main show, no, don't know idea about jobs. Fitting <laughs> <laughs> people in. Yeah, you just want to learn, huh? Yeah. Very yeah. correct, you just want to learn. Take yeah. more, take care. Yeah. I don't want to hire people that given up. Take care. Take care. So, thinking hire the wrong one, huh? <laughs> so, you need some hope, huh? Some hope. One more question yeah. online, would uh, asked. <coughs> What's the better choice, hiring a generalist or a specific niche? Yeah. Yeah. Generalist. What's a specific? Yeah. Yeah. This is coming from a corporate perspective, not from, sorry, from startup perspective. Sometimes the person who is hired is totally the wrong fit for the organization, and they come and they try and put their own rough idea, and ain't gonna work. Sorry. <laughs> so what I'm going to do today uh, is to give all of you a framework, a methodology for you to decide whether it's the right fit, wrong fit, and then make good decisions out here. Because whether it is corporate, startup, SME, it's so critical to have the right person for the right job at the point in time. Right? Because organizations are continuing to all work. Uh, so very briefly about myself, uh, engineer by training, started my career in Ministry of Manpower, doing labor relations, employment parts, performed to Sandlot, Esther, IDA, and currently uh, I spend my time, work, um, a lot of time volunteering at Singapore Computer Society, as well as advising companies and startups in digital, HR, and OD. Right person, right job. My first question for all of you is this. This thing down here, right person, right job. Right? What happens uh, when the job is much bigger than what the person can do? What do you they think? rise to the level of their incompetence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you see, right, the job is too big for the person, the person will get very stressed out. And it would happen a lot in startups, especially when the startup is growing very fast. Because as the job grows, the person may not grow enough to match the job. Right? So this is something that founders you know, of startups, you know, even those who are managing startups, need to be very mindful about. And what happens uh, when the, the person is much bigger than the job? Ah, then they move from here. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? Uh, so then they move from Yishun, right? Yeah. They move from Yishun, I see. I see. And then from Yishun, I see. All right. All right. So, so, job too small. I mean, we all have gone through this, right? The person to feel bored, right? Say, hi, yeah. it's time to move on. Right? What's the point, right? I'm not using my skills. Because as a human being, we all want to be able to contribute. So what we are trying to do uh, at all times, I right, want to make sure there's a good match between the person and the job. Right? So when there's a good match, right, you feel like Superman and say, hey, I can do this. I'm going to do the result. The person would feel happy. Now the question is, this equation down here, finding a good match between the person and the job. Is it easy or 
Difficult. Depends on the boss. Depends on the boss. Huh? Why do you say that? Um, this one requires a lot of uh, customization. There's no one size fit all. So there are certain bosses that just I, I write the job code, if you fit it, if you want to apply for it, that's it, you know, they go like that. Mm. So the, the level of detail that they go into is insufficient. <laughs> so when that happens, you know, you, 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 you have people bigger than jobs or people smaller than jobs, you know, but it's a total misfit. Yeah. So there are different types, of course I do agree, there are different leaders. There are leaders who are very good in spotting where they're good at and design the job around you so that there's a good match all the time. There are also bosses who are quite structured. They need a person who sit, who fit this certain way because they already plan through how needs to be done. Right? So again, it also depends on what sort of leader you are, or what sort of leaders the startups you're involved in, they are in, and what works best. Uh, to, to, to solve this equation, uh, I, I'm just going to just give you an illustration right, before I go, go into this. Uh, okay. Imagine, right, this is a flat piece of object. Flat piece of paper. Okay. No matter how complicated a flat piece of object is, how many dimensions do you need to describe a flat piece of object? Two. Two, right? X and Y axis. Okay. This is a three dimensional. Yeah, I really gave up on two. This yeah. is a story <laughs> object. How many dimensions do you need? Three. Three, right? X, Y, and then axis in the losing kind of Now, so in a case of job person fit, it's also about identifying those dimensions. Once you are able to identify a dimensions that can sort of completely describe the person and the job, then you have a way to say, hey, is there a fit or no fit? And where? And then you can then make the specific interventions. So what are those dimensions? Uh, there are only four. Right? Uh, so dimension of job person fit. Uh, I, I used to call this four dimension framework, but people say it become a 4D framework. Right. It's not take away the four, it's just the dimensions of job person fit. Or <laughs> uh, commonly known as a 4D framework. So the first dimension is called capacity. Right? What is capacity? All jobs come with different levels of complexity. Some jobs, you just need to follow instruction. Right? Take this object, move from A to B. Right? Do this by web. Some, a next level of job, it requires solving problems. So there are obstacles you need to find out, you need to provide a solution. At the next level, there are jobs which require you, requires you to plan, right? which is based on outcome, step one, step two, step three, what is it? And if you move up the next level of complexity, you need people who know how to general manage. So typically, right, those jobs have multiple teams. Then thereafter, you have jobs that's related to strategy, policy. So all these right, require different level of cognitive ability. The first thing to accept is that people do come with different size up here. Right? Not all are the same. Right? We all know that. Right? Uh, children, all of you have children? <laughs> children? No children? A few that I know of. A few that I know of. Okay. So if you observe children, right, you can tell who it is actually more intelligent. Right? Uh, all of your colleagues, you can say, hey, that guy is really sharp. So we have to recognize that. Different level of jobs comes with different level of complexity, requiring different level type of CC up here. This thing is very seldom talked about. For a very simple reason. If you look at if you look at HR, right, the field of HR, which most of the literature about HR comes from which country? Anyone? US. US. In the US, what do they believe? Democracy. Anyone can be the 
leader. President, mm. that's how they got Trump. <laughs> but not true, right? Not, not true. true, right? We all know that people do come with different sides of capacity. We just have to accept it. In this dimension, this one, everyone is very aware. Right? It is called skilled knowledge. It is the knowledge that you have that you can apply skillfully. It could be related to a particular industry, function, geography, or others. Now, if you really, really want to be skillful in a particular area of knowledge, what can you do to acquire those, those knowledge? What do you think? Formal Is training. Formal training. Okay. But to get skillful, you spend the most time on? Applying. On the job. Application. So that's the key thing to know about skill knowledge. If you want to acquire skill knowledge, you can learn from it in a classroom, but most of the time, you acquire mastery, skillfulness through application. Now with this, uh, with this two dimension, it's already quite powerful, right? For leaders, especially in startups that are starting to go in science, to have uh, a few applications uh, now, if in a team, the capacity of the boss is here, the capacity of the subordinate is the same, what do you think will happen? <coughs> boss may need everything to the subordinate. Okay. Or may kick him out because he feels threatened. Okay. <laughs> he feels threatened. Okay. Well, how would the subordinate feel about the boss? <laughs> how are you doing? Yeah, I right. should be the boss. I should be the boss, right? Okay. Then, what if the boss capacity is here, the subordinate capacity is very far away? How would the boss feel about the subordinate? Why the hell did I hire this guy? Yeah, I need to roll myself down so that I can understand, right? Understand, make this but understand. How would the subordinate feel about the boss? Damn scared. Yeah, exactly. I really don't understand. So in an entrepreneurship environment, which situation happens the most? Uh? The first case of <laughs> this one and, and what? A bit of both actually. A bit of both. Right? Yes. yes. <laughs> so in particular, in a startup environment, what you need to be mindful about is that when you start up, all hands on them, everything gets done. Right? As the startup grows, the founder and the VC could say, hey, given the complexity, is the founder the right person to take the organization to the next level? Right. That's why in the US in Silicon Valley, you see a lot of startups saying, hey, I brought it to this stage, it's time to move on, I'm gonna hire someone at the right capacity to take this forward. So understanding this, hopefully, would allow uh, entrepreneurs to say, when do I let go? Because if I continue to do this job that is very complicated and complexity in scale, I may not be able to grow it to the next stage because the job is just too big for me to handle. And that acceptance is critical. Okay. So that's one application. The other application is in the area of hiring, just in this two dimension. If your job requires a lot of planning, right? A lot of planning. And you have two candidates. One candidate can plan, but don't have the required skill knowledge because he comes from a different industry. One is a PhD in that field, but all he does every day is solve problems. Give problems solve. Ask him to plan, say, to me. Who would you hire? Number one. He, he, first thing, his, uh, his expertise matches what I need. I need planners. Yeah. And second thing, if his domain knowledge is not enough, uh, for him to plan, you don't need so, so in-depth domain knowledge. You just need maybe up to middle level. And then, as and when you really need in-depth, you can find out. Yeah. Correct, absolutely. So this point is absolutely critical for the startup environment because your job is going to change. Right? The business model may change, you may pivot. So when you bring people in, focus on those who have the capacity to deal with those challenges. 
Direct relevant skill set may not be that critical at a certain stage. Right? Okay, any any questions before I move on to the the other two dimensions? Is it clear? Capacity, skill knowledge, fair? Okay, that's what so how do you measure capacity? You know you can measure skill knowledge and application knowledge. A lot of times it's gut feel, uh, but when I was in IDA, ASCAP, and SEMLOG, what I do is that I throw the candidate case studies. This case study is so broad that they can answer in any lens. So for someone right, who is only at photo instruction, they will say, oh, this case study, uh, now nah, this is the solution. Right? Yeah. For someone who can operate at the problem solving level, they say, Oh, for this case study, I find out about this, 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 this. Now, this is the solution. For people who are able to operate at the planning level, they will say, hmm, for this issue, I think there are five steps to achieve the outcome. Milestone one, milestone two, milestone three. So there's, a, there's a, this, this planning kind of uh, pattern that you can hear. Then for people who are operating at the general manager level, they say, oh, for this case study, three areas to tackle. For each of these areas, these are the steps. So again, you see that kind of thinking process. For people who operate at the strategy uh, policy level, they say, I have this case study. I question the assumptions. I think the assumption is wrong. There's something wrong. So you, from that, roughly you can tell right, um, how they go about solving the problem right, uh, and observe uh, and also a lot of gut feel. Yeah. This one is very important, especially when it comes to uh, start. When the people come in, what's the aspiration? Uh, do they want to be a millionaire, billionaire, or do they want to change the world? Because if you can understand the aspiration of the people, you can then use that to say, how do I continuously keep this person motivated regardless of how much is paid. Right. So let's go a bit deeper into this thing called aspiration. Why is it so important? Okay. Imagine, uh, okay, I know many of you, uh, you, you are not in the corporate world, but imagine you're in the corporate world and you have a five day work week. For most people, how would you feel on a Friday even though it is a Friday. Retiring. Yeah. Huh? Retiring. What else? From a corporate on a Friday afternoon, how would you feel on a Friday afternoon? Party leave. Party leave. Why? Leave. Why? Leave. Relax. You can leave. Relax. Relax, right? Yeah. On a Sunday afternoon. Oh, dread. dread. <laughs> Even though it's a Sunday afternoon, how would most people feel? Blues. Next question is this. What shape how you feel on a Friday and on a Sunday that determines uh, your state of mind at a point in time? What was the single thing that shaped your feeling? The job. Not the job. On a Friday, you feel a certain way because of the weekend. Weekend, yeah. On a Sunday afternoon, even though it's a Sunday afternoon, you're feeling that way because of the weekday. Monday. So what is common with respect to the weekday and the weekend? They all exist in the anticipation. Yeah, yeah. So all that exists in what? So that 
that future, when you compare that future to the problems that you need to solve, is small. Uh, Lee Kuan Yew, right? He wants to bring Singapore from third world to first world. So with that future, a lot of things that come will be guided by that vision that he has. So it's important for startups in particular because you are going against many odds. The statistics for success rate of startups are high. So to go against that all, you must have something that allows you to overcome the challenges that you're going to face. And it has to be big enough. If not, what's the point? Right? And you have to use that to hire people who are aligned with you. And from my experience, right, money is not a very good motivator. I mean, you get the money, yeah, you're happy. After all, you want some more. So, best motivator is something that is purposeful, something that can help you and allow you to sustain the journey. This thing about the future is also something that can work the other way. certain things and you are funded by VC. You make a promise to the VC that you are going to deliver something. But you have not. And you are already late. How would you feel if you walk past the VC's partner office? I won't be walking past. <laughs> you won't be walking past. <laughs> why? Why? I'll why? go straight to the canteen. Yeah, go straight to the canteen. <laughs> but why? why? What, what, what are you fearful of? Huh? Accountability. Yeah, you feel what are you feel when you walk past what are you fearful of that could happen? <coughs> the fellow come out. Embarrassment. Embarrassment. Oh, what, 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 what is the event in your mind that you are fearful of? Not delivery. No, the, the confrontation. Confrontation. And that confrontation with the VC occur where? Occur in your mind where? So if you understand this deep enough, you will say, hey, for me to continue to focus forward, I need to make sure I deliver. And if I don't deliver, I need to communicate and renegotiate. Right? Because if your future is blocked up by so many things, then you have no space to move forward. Right? So, so that is, uh, even though you can use it for recruitment, but do use it to check in on where you are. Is your future continue to be have enough space for you to deal with challenges? Or full of things that you haven't delivered that can be sorted out. Okay? The last dimension uh, is trade stuff. This is very important because it helps startup funders and also VCs to check in on your team. Right? Because human beings are uh, all have different patterns. We experience the world through a lens that's unique to us because of past experience. So let me uh, go a bit deeper in this so that you can understand this and start to see how you can apply it. Uh. If you choose to put on a pair of glasses that's tinted yellow, how would you see the world? Yellow. Right. If it's tinted red, how would you see the world? Red. Red. Imagine you are uh, seven years old, happily doing your SSR. Your teacher walks past, look at what you're doing, and say, Oi, why are you so careless? Didn't I tell you to always watch out for what could be wrong? so that you can spot mistakes. As a kid, you then look at the teacher and say, yes, teacher. And at a moment in time, you decide to put on a lens called, there is something wrong here. It will help you. And that's the lens that you see the world. Now, if you have that lens, what? And traits always comes in. 
your strength and your weakness. What strength would you develop with that lens? There was something wrong here. What strength would you have? You would be very what? Careful. Careful. Yeah. What else? Meticulous. Meticulous, yeah. Right. You always check, right? Because there's something wrong here, huh? Your, your mental attention, you're very zooming. You say, wow, there's something okay, I check. Very good at spotting mistakes. But what could happen to you on the flip side with that lens? Very slow. Uh, slow? Okay, what else? Judgmental. Huh? Prejudiced view. You what? Prejudiced view. You are prejudging. Pre prejudging, right? Prejudice. Prejudging. Prejudice. What else? What else is more impactful? Uh, if everything to you is wrong, right? And <laughs> you see the world, right? Yeah. What would you become? Sexualism. See it, right? So that's one level. Imagine now it's a different kid. Same thing happened. But the kid decides to choose a different lens. What other lens can this kid choose for the same situation? That is not, there is something wrong here. Uh, there's another way to skip the cat. There's another way, no, they are a kid that's seven years old. Oh, so they, can, they can figure. They can figure. <laughs> what, what, would, what would the kid say? There's another way. Okay. So they say, no, there's another way. La. The teacher has said this, there's another way. For someone to say, that see the world through, there's another way. What strength and what uh, weakness does the person develop? Creative for strength. Creative. There's always another way, uh, huh? Wrong, wrong, wrong. Huh? Uh, yeah, courage. Courage. Okay. Then final step. Callous. Callous. What else? Yeah, wrong. It's okay, lah. There's always another way. Uh, empathy. 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 Yeah. Yeah. empathy yeah. <laughs> no. No, she meant the A P A. Ah, A P A. Ah, watch out, watch out, ah, ayah, the border. There's another way. So what I'm trying to illustrate is that all of us already come with preconceived lens. If and the lens uh, is something that is very subconscious. If you observe the person long enough, you know the pattern. Right? For those of you with kids, I'm sure you know their pattern. For those of you who work with people now, I'm sure you know, hey, this person is like that. Right? So from there, you can tell what is the trait. Because different traits make you good at different things. Like the guy, right, with, there's something wrong here, it's good, what our job? Mm -hmm. Always check one. Auditor. Auditor, finance. And then the, the guy, the guy who say, what is it that you say? Huh? There's another way. There's another way, right? Good, what our job? Crime. Huh? Crime. Crime. <laughs> 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 Foreign things. <sister. laughs> That's another way. Now the question is this. Dark side, dark side. When, when is the lens a strength? When is the lens a weakness? Right? That's the next question. Right? Because once you know, either you're a PC, a mentor, or an entrepreneur, you need to make use of whatever you have. So when, when is it a strength? And when is it a weakness? It's a strength or then and it's a weakness or then Okay, anyone? Why is he like feeling the blanks? Yeah, of course, it's in me! It's in remember!
she find fault with <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so what do you see? Everyone that's there. Fault, oh, fault. Oh, fault. Fault. <laughs> so what is the right lens to use if you are looking for a partner? Okay. What is the right lens, huh? Why you sigh? <laughs> no, I just reject that new lens. Jack <laughs> <Daniel's> lens. <laughs> That's too dangerous. That's too dangerous. <laughs> That's too dangerous. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, it happens. Uh, huh? It may be helpful. Yeah. Uh, but uh, appropriate lens will be what is common. Because all good relationships start with something in common, right? So if you can say, oh, what's common? Oh, that guy, we love uh, golf, you know, or we love travel. I think that's something to start So once you are able to know your lens and use your lens, right, then you can see it as a source of strength. So therefore, to have all this, right, what is it that you need? In order for you to be able to do all this, you need a lot of what? In a startup environment, the I team is very small. Error, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's an A missing. <laughs> the one that is in the server. Wrong clue. Uh. Wrong clue, wrong clue. <laughs> I apologize. Yeah. No, so in a startup environment, uh, you can use this for hiring. But once you know this, it means that you, in order to provide awareness, the team has to be very comfortable in giving feedback. Feedback in a manner that people can be made aware. Right. And I'm going to share this tip about feedback right, because so many people needs don't give feedback in a manner that's effective. So I think this is useful. Uh, once you get a person involved, okay, let me ask you this. As human beings, do we like to be praised or do we like to be scolded? Positive reinforcement praise, not praise, right? So, what go wrong in a feedback is people feel attacked. Mm. Wow, you're attacking me, you know? Right? Boom, the knife just come in, right? and I feel hurt, right? And uh, research has shown uh, that emotionally being hurt and physically being hurt fire the same neurons, yeah. right? So, so that's why uh, people like to be praised, right? So therefore, if we once we understand that, then the structure of giving feedback so as to give people awareness is for first the context, which is so and so and so during that situation, behavior, the things that you do. This is this. Then the last part, right, is impact on. Me as in the person in the feedback. You know, that day, this, 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 that, you did this, 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 this. I want to let you know, I felt very disappointed. Right. So it's small me. Or if it's something good, I say, oh, that day, you know, you did this. I feel so inspired by what you've done. Right. So when you turn it around to say the impact on me, I'm not directing at you, mom, I'm just sharing with you how I felt. So that you can then get how I felt and you decide what you want to do. So that's something for uh, I would encourage you to try. Right? Try it. Um, and research has shown there's a healthy ratio of praise uh, versus scope. Right? Anybody want to give a guess? At the workplace, what is the healthy ratio? Okay. Praise versus scope. Three is the one. one. Uh, so Family then? In a family, what's the healthy ratio? Five is to one. Ah, very good. <laughs> <laughs> More than that. La. More. <laughs> family need not love. Yeah. Six new. Six new. Yeah, six six seven, new. seven, seven. That's a research number. Huh? So I, I <laughs> want to say this because sometimes in a startup environment, 
you're rushing, 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 right? But you need to spend time to acknowledge each other. But don't overdo the praise, lah. Then become not real, right? Everything also good. <laughs> How can it be? So with this understanding of this four dimensions, okay, this one I will run through it. Uh, we talk about this, we talk about this, we talk about this as well. Alright, so I will run through. Alright. Uh, this one Chuck say we need to do. But I do have a um, I do I have designed a very simple interview rating form and also a series of questions for those four dimensions. So I'm happy to share that but just this is just for your own use. Mm -hmm. Right? Own use don't don't sell it. I mean if you do sell it, please share some revenue with me. <laughs> right? but, but just to to help bring this awareness to the community. Uh, so I will send it to Chuck. Uh, okay, what about This one, common issue, right? Start up. Can pay, cannot pay. <laughs> uh, Sometimes, the startup got funding and really go be crazy. Yeah. Correct. So, the principle is this, uh, uh, when it comes to money, uh, I always tell people, you got two apple, right? Identical. Okay? One is selling for uh, $100. The other one is selling for $100. Which one will buy? Nike dollars. So you must know the market. Uh. What is the market? The market is 90. 90. Uh. It's just 90. Uh, and you have to be quite, quite real about this. Uh. If the job, this is the market rate, you want people to you want people to take below market rate, you must give something in exchange, right? If not, then how? So it gives you a good, once you are clear that it's all about the market rate, then you have a basis to actually discuss. There's also this danger here, right? If you're well funded, right? You begin to pay people more than market. Also a problem, right? So because when you start to pay people more than market, what happens typically? They get big headed. They get big headed, what else? The market changes. Rate higher. <laughs> Okay, but more importantly, when it's time for the person to leave, you think the person wants to leave or not? No. No one lah. Market rate is like 1,000 below. I stay here, I can enjoy more than market rate. So I stay lah. But he may not be motivated anymore. It's very painful. Sounds very familiar. <laughs> very true, no? no? It's very true. Very true. So that's why I, I have shared. There are, okay, I won't name because it's recorded. I would say which organization, but I would say that many organizations need to take more because it is important to have a healthy turnover. No need to keep everyone because if everyone stay there for a long time, there's no turnover, the organization is not fresh. Right? So even if you look at our own body, cells die off, new cells grow. So there's a renewal process and everybody needs to grow. So this one is really very mindful, uh, especially for startups who are receive uh, good funding. Okay, so to sum it up, when you hire people, all right, number one, understand what is the complexity. Are they at the right capacity? If they are all the capacity that's higher than what your job requires, what should you do? If this person that you interview, right, his capacity is higher than what your job requires, then what do you do? Don't, don't hire or give him more work. Exactly, give him more work. If this person's capacity is below, what do you do? Either don't hire or less work. Less work right? Always have a good match. Skilled knowledge always can be trained. Right? Um, Explorations need to be clear so that you can learn how to motivate it. And traits, right? Traits, what is the most important trait for a startup? More or less uh, resilience. Resilience, resilience. Hunger. Hunger. Eager. 
right? So, so with this, hopefully, hopefully you can when you uh, like for all of you here and all of you online, but next time you hire, hopefully it will help you to get a better match. Uh. So with that, thank you very much. Any question for Yijing? Yeah. Yes, Yijing, question. you mentioned uh, renewal, there's a healthy rate. Uh, typically, what would that figure be? Depends on industry. Uh, okay, let's like say for uh, modern IT. IT, I think because of the weight of change of technology, um, any annually anything between 10 to 15 or maybe 20 will oh, be considered very healthy. Very high. Because that's an industry average. Right? In the hospitality sector, I used to work in, uh, our turnover is about 10-15% a month. Why? Because in the hospitality sector, you have to experience the job before you say whether you like it or not. So if you come in, you don't like it, ah, yeah, you really go. Lah, ah, because that's how it is. Because you may think you enjoy facing customer. But some of the customer quite nasty one. Eh? Yes. Right? You may think you enjoy turning weights. But huh, you need a lot of muscle and you can turn the thing, you know. So again, it, it depends. Uh, it really depends. Uh, industry, industry. It depends on the nature of the job and also to what extent you need a, uh, a church. Uh, there are also in some organizations where you want to reduce turnover as much as possible during a certain period because you need that period to find your leader and those leaders can only be good for within. One good example would be the army. Right? The army, Navy, Air Force. Your general, right, must come from your cohort of newborns. That's all you have. And you can't have any highest. So therefore they have to then design their structure such that you can sustain, keep enough people so that among of them you can choose your next chief of army, chief of air force, and so on. So all these are the different considerations. What are the challenge for startup? I mean, I mean, I, I, what are the challenge for is actually market pay, market rate. Yeah. You know, you know, because they have limited resources, right? so they always look for the best with the least, right? Yeah. And some of the strategy, perhaps, is using other currency, right? Options, you know, shares. The, the question is that how do you how do you actually know right uh, how do you actually select the person because one of the dimensions which is pay is already warped yeah. you know what I mean yeah. what, what, what I, I, I think I think if you look at the, the dimensions uh, I would suggest that you think about the dimensions you can Evaluate for the people that bring in where is the best place to match their skills that they have learned and start to do the movement and have some kind of frame to help you. Know. And then when you when you grow to a certain stage whereby you require professional help, professional help, be clear what sort of professional help have they done it before. So I think the, the if you have ten dollars, you only have ten dollars, you don't have. So within $10, you make the best of what you can do. And when you bring the people in, have a sense of where they are. And if you have a case where the boss capacity is here, the subordinate capacity is here, so be it, or lower yourself down, or you want to get a job done, right? right? So to, to me, that would be the best support, because ultimately, it's about getting a job done. Right? If things are not perfect, then how do you adjust? If you know the person no, by nature, by DNA, ah, he's like that, right? It's not because he's nasty or what, it's just his lens. Ah. So you just get the rest of your team members to say, hey, he's just like that, ah. it's for him, ah. he's not personal. So I think with that understanding, it gives you more peace uh, to look clearly and uh, precisely on what's the situation. And it allows you to say, what do we do? What makes sense? What's practical? Okay. Okay.
Thank you very much. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. I think it's actually very helpful having a, a, a framework to actually look at the type of people you want to hire for the startup. Pizza is here, right? So I think we can, uh, we are still around for a while, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So we can actually catch up. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Thank you very much. So, but, but before you all, I like to ask this, uh, and I, I won't do your lines. Last exercise. Uh, is still on? On. Okay, it's on. On, huh? You want to show? Maybe I, I'll just ask this, uh, which is, for this session down here, what is your biggest takeaway? Right? So, please have a sense to be a comment. So, I just want I, to I like your, your, your lenses uh, example. It, 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 it simplifies a lot of things that is sometimes unexplainable. So it gives a very uh, easy to understand uh, a complex human situations. So I like that very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How are you? Uh, what's your takeaway? I know you came in half. Yeah. yeah. Like, what's your takeaway from this session? I guess the second half of it, they said about balancing and compromising in a way, meeting halfway. I think that's a good point. That's what we always do at our side. We, we do see a lot of stuff, especially newer stuff or young stuff. They tend to be very hard. Yeah, they expect things to be A, A, A. Then sometimes they work another one which is lesser or more, they feel stressed out. Then they always have to sit in between and say, yeah, you know, just let it be like, it's going to be, be so hard. It's so oh, yeah. give, give, give and take. It's not, it's not, it's not against you or anything. You know, just, just, just relax. Like. Okay. Good. But, but, good. Okay. Joe, how about you? What's your takeaway for? I was actually struck by how largely or broadly speaking, and flatteringly speaking as well, uh, Singapore workforce seems to be very two-dimensional. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> you want to tell us more? Um, we're much more on the capacity and the skill knowledge aspect of things. Uh, low on aspirations, I believe. And that's just be weak on traits. Mm -hmm. Very weak so on traits. Awareness. Yeah. yeah. Awareness. Well, yeah. So, um, we're designed really well to be a mature company. Uh, we're designed very poorly to be a startup. Mm. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I, I like the lenses, seriously. But I, on Joe's comment, actually, I have an interesting thing because uh, my first startup, I, I pushed a lot of aspirations a lot. Mm. That happened to be lucky for me. I, I had a few who were to that. But not everyone. I had the same issue that many of them were not taken by aspirations. They're very focused on the dollar, basically, mm. to that mission. That's it. It's very tough, very tough. But I had a few who were willing to do that. Mm. The way I promised them is that you work yeah. five years on the time, I said, the skills you develop will be good for your yeah. future. Sometimes uh, reflection, the reflection of uh, societal values, uh, yeah. Yeah. and also the environment. That, uh, so we just need to be mindful of that. Okay? Yeah, like Chuck said, I had one guy who actually said, I don't have options, I want to sell it more up front, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So they can do that. It's tough. So you think two things. Uh, one is the first question that we ask: How is the hiring different between corporate and startups? And I think uh, Joe answered it implicitly by saying that uh, if we use this framework, which is actually simplifying a lot of stuff, then the current uh, way the resources are in Singapore at this point of time, we're looking at the first two axes, not the later two axes, and that's where the startup challenge, I think, lies uh, yes. in terms of trying to see. We all of us come from a corporate background, having gone to startups, so we. We do know that this is what we're. Uh, yeah. This is where the challenge lies. Yeah. But now it will be more clearer that yeah, this is where the exact point lies, right? So, okay. so just try to look at that. Thank you. In a very superficial level, go very specific and see where the challenges are. And uh, hopefully, we'll be able to overcome. Let's see. Okay. Take question to the lady. You want to share anything? Well, it's it's good to hear that uh, look at this. Well, I, I, I guess, you know, um, um, the reason why we are more, more looking or you're looking more at traits and aspirations because you're looking at startup side. Because the other two, you assume that, you know, whoever comes in already have some form of a framework, you know. But after having said that, I'm also seeing that more and more of the younger uh, uh, guys coming in sort of have a bit more well-rounded in terms of some aspiration and some different traits, yeah. right? as opposed to, I guess, uh, guys about my age, 
right? Which are a little bit more two dimensional, yeah. more structured, right? And that's why I like models, because I'm more structured. <laughs> 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 they're helpful, uh, they're, I mean, they're helpful yeah. as a guide, but you've got to use them. Yeah, correctly. Okay, with that, thank you very thank much. You thank, thank you very much. much. Thank thank you much. much. Okay, pizza. The lady just stepped yeah. in. <laughs>